In this video we're going to install Bookstack on Windows 10. Bookstack is a simple, self-hosted, easy to use platform for organizing and storing information. What I like about it is the ability to create shelves or bookshelves and then books and then chapters. And so you can have a virtual library at your fingertips that you've created. That's appealing to me. I've used a lot of different note-taking and writing apps and there's just something about Bookstack that is different and exactly what I'm looking for. So in this video we're going to install Bookstack on Windows 10. There is also a video that is the official Bookstack install video for Windows 10 but it's 39 minutes long. I wanted to kind of compress that down make it quicker. Plus there are a couple things, a couple settings that were missed in the video that I wanted to add in there. So let's go ahead and get started. First we need to get XAMP or XAMP, however you want to call it. You can find that at apachefriends.org. I've got the 8.1.6 and that may change between the time that I make this video and the time that you actually go to do it yourself, but the 64-bit version, obviously. Um, then you want to get Composer from getcomposer.org slash download, and here's the link for that. And then you want to get Git, which is going to allow us to pull uh, Bookstack from a repository or an image or however they have it stored. But anyway, uh, here's the download for that at gitforwindows.org. So let's go ahead and close these windows. I have the Bookstack installation pulled up here. And we're going to scroll down to Manual Installation. And this next page here is a uh, example file that we're going to use from this link here. This is what this is. So anyway, we're going to use that. To begin with, we need to install the applications that we had downloaded, which in this case is going to be the um, the XAMP, Git, and Composer. First, we'll install Git. Here you might want to set the editor that Git uses. It's not going to be anything that we care about in this particular video, but I'll set it for Notepad anyway. I'm going to just let it pick what it thinks I should use. And then once we're through all that, it'll install it. Next, we'll install XAMP. We need to do this next because Composer requires that we have PHP, and XAMP has PHP. So, It's warning us that we shouldn't install it on C program files, which we're not going to anyway. And the reason for that is because permissions, Windows is kind of goofy that way. I'm going to install it on my J drive. And this takes maybe a minute. While we're thinking about it, the uh, Linux version of this is so easy to install. I installed it yesterday, I think it was, on Linux Mint 20. And I just picked the uh, Ubuntu 20 install. and it took off and ran. In fact, it's on this page. Let me see, right here. Yeah, just these three commands installs it and it's ready to go. So, just in case you wanted to know that. Okay, now that that's installed, we need to do Composer. It 
if PHP isn't registered on your system, it's going to come up and say, hey, where's PHP at? And then you're going to have to browse to it. In this case, you just point it to your XAMPP folder and then your PHP folder and then, of course, the executable. Easy peasy. Okay, so all that's done. We don't need that open anymore. First thing we need to do is copy this and we need to open up a command prompt. So I'll right click and do run as administrator. Then we need to go to J and we're going to go to htdocs and this is where we're going to throw our folder for uh, bookstack. So it's just going to download it. Okay, that's simple. We want to leave this open because we need to do more commands. First, what we want to do is go into our J and we want to go into our HT docs here. And I'm going to rename this lowercase. So now what we need to do is go to Bookstack. And then this is where we're going to do our next step, which is this particular thing here. Now it gives us a warning, and I did this on purpose. We need to go into our php.any and enable a couple of things so that this error doesn't come up. So let's do that really quick. So let's go ahead and load up our XAMPP. We need to go into Apache config php.any and we need to scroll down until we see a bunch of extensions right here. Need to enable GD and the video tells us that we need to enable this one too. He wasn't sure if we actually needed it but we enabled it anyway and it shouldn't matter so I enabled those two by taking out the comment character and then I hit control S to save it and you'll know that if it's saved if the asterisk disappears up here so that's saved let's see if this will work again there we go ignore this message you're not doing mail with this anyway now that that's done we can go to our next step now we have to edit the env file so let's go into our folders go into book stack and scroll down and we have an example here so I'm just going to rename it instead of copying it and I'll open it and here is where we need to change some settings first we need to set this for localhost and this was not in the original video so uh, this would have been missed and it would have caused you a problem localhost and then we're going to use port 8080. So that's done. But now we need to go into the MySQL and create a database and a user. So let's do that real quick. We will load up Apache and MySQL. Go into admin for the MySQL. Now we're at home. Go into user accounts. Create a new user. We're going to call this one librarian for lack of a better term. We're using localhost, so set that. Then we're just going to give it a password of decimal, like the Dewey Decimal System. Now, if you're going to create a um, database with the same name, you could check these two boxes to uh, create the database and also grant you privileges, but I'm going to do it separate. Next, we go into home again, make sure we're there, go to databases, create a database, and we're going to call it Bookstack. 
and now that that's created we need to go back home and click on our user which is librarian click on database and then select book stack and click go next we just check all and click go to give our privileges for the database and we're set so our database name was book stack our username was uh, librarian and our password was decimal and that should be it we don't need to change any of the mail settings so we just hit control s to save and we can exit that and we're done go back to our installation instructions next it's telling us to make sure that our folders have the permissions and since we're in Windows we don't have to deal with that so that's good now we have to generate the key in our .env file so we'll go to our folder and just paste this in there and it will ask you are you sure yes now if we go back into env we'll see that this was added where before it was different so that's good next we go and we can skip this one the ht access and then we can go down here and this is where it's not really apparent but this is where we check the uh, config settings for Apache so I'm gonna uh, stop these we go in here go into Apache browse config and extra and there are two files we need to edit the first one is SSL dot config and this one is one that wasn't in the video that needed to be changed because if you don't it's going to cause an error so this is going to be localhost and I'm just going to change this to localhost and that that's all you have to change here save that next we need to go into vhosts notice that everything is commented out with the pound sign let me go ahead and minimize that if we go up here this is the example file that we needed to copy to paste in there so I'll copy that and I'll go back over here and paste it in there we need to put listen for our port that we're going to use which is going to be 8080 and we need to change this to be 8080 as well then we need to scroll down and we need to set this for localhost and these are Linux paths so we need to change this to DOS paths and or Windows and the only way uh, the easiest way to do that I mean is to go into Bookstack and public and then up here let me expand it so you can see it if you click on this and on an empty space you get this and it's selected automatically so you just control C to copy it then you can go back to your file and we're going to put quotes and we're going to put our path in there we need to select this as well making sure not to select this uh, greater than sign because that needs to be there and then down here we need to change these to logs these are variables that should contain the uh, logs uh, path but for some reason it doesn't work or it causes an error okay everything is set all we have to do is save control s and I should be able to close this let me go back to the install we need to do a migrate which is going to pull in the database table information actually I need to start that server again I forgot that there we go so this will pull in our database information that creates all the tables and now we should be ready I believe yes all we have to do is go to localhost colon 8080 and we're done 
email is admin at admin dot com and then password is password and now we are in bookstack we have shelves which there are none yet so we can create a shelf uh, let's say we want this shelf to be called I don't know cookbooks or yeah cookbooks we can save the shelf then we can create a book this one might be crock-pot recipes and then we can create a new chapter this one might be uh, beef then we can create a new page under that chapter and this one might be beef and what's neat about this editor is that you can switch between having this which is you know what you see is what you get to markdown and stable is probably the one you want to go with so now we have a page right we can save the page up here and if we go back we can see that we have our hierarchy we have our shelves right we have a shelf called cookbooks and then under cookbooks we have our crockpot recipes book and under that book we have a chapter called beef crockpot recipes and under page one we have our beef stroganoff so you can see how powerful this is and I haven't even gotten into how to tag things, which I don't know how to yet, because I just, I just learned about this yesterday. Uh, hopefully you find this video useful, and um, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.